420. Mr. Grow It. From the Stack Podcast. Growers who are looking for that secret sauce usually are just missing something from their garden. And to help with that, we bring you the Stash Blend Premium Plant Additive. Stash Blend brings beneficial bacteria, silicon, seaweed, humic acid, and has enough macronutrition to help lower the dosages of your base feed too. Unleash your plant's true potential with Stash Blend Premium Plant Additive. Available at Grower's House. And thanks to Ventana Plant Science for sponsoring today's video. If you're looking for a healthy and pure way to start cloning your plants, consider checking out Ventana Plant Science Cloning Gel. Formulated with the development of clones in mind and without unnecessary additives, this gel focuses purely on the plant growth and health. If you head over to growershouse.com, you'll get some great cloning gel and you'll have some great success when it comes to creating great roots. This episode is brought to you by AC Infinity. Check out their Cloud Ray Gen 2 Oscillated Clip Pan. Their next-gen clip fan has been re-engineered to provide a long-lasting motor and customizable airflow for all stages of your plant's growth cycle. It features 10 speeds and 10 dynamic wind modes to simulate outdoor airflow and links with UIS controllers for Wi-Fi app control. Click the link in the description section below so you can learn more about their CloudRay clip fans and the discount code THESTASH15 works on both Amazon and their website, acinfinity.com. Boys. Boys, hey, welcome back. What up, Tam Gang? Let's the fist get it. smash. Good to oh, see yeah. you. Oh, yeah, man. Back in action, another in person episode. Live Gotta love these. From FTS Studios, man, baby. Man, big shout out to everybody who helped make this happen. And not only you guys, of course, but the sponsors, of mm-hmm. course, as you guys see behind us. Mm-hmm. And Stash Blend, man, made it happen. Yeah. Check out stashblend.com. Discount code is the stash. The stash, the stash, and, and a really and a really uh, the stash, That's what I mean. yeah. and a huge huge shout out to all our patrons. FTS is crowdfunded and crowdsourced, and these free episodes are able to be made every single week by one of one of you camera angles. angles. <laughs> <laughs> one of you camera <laughs> angles made this happen. You got it. So there are different peers, uh, tiers on the they Patreon, are different peers and <laughs> on the bottom of the screen right now, we're shouting out the premium tier. So thanks to the premium tier members. Who, yeah, again, help fund this podcast. So yeah. appreciate ya. you. guys Very made cool. it happen. Patreon.com slash from the stash if you want to support. Yeah. yeah. Wicked stuff, man. So cool to be able to sit we, here with you boys. Well, with that, we do have the sessions that we do once a month now. So we're in Discord hanging out, smoking, chilling. Yeah. We hang out there thing. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it, pretty cool. It's interactive too. We do video chat. So uh, our, our members can come. They chat. They smoke with us. We have a exactly. huge conversation. Yeah. It was really cool last time. Huge shout out to... BSB, untrained astronaut. There was a few that really joined in. It was really yeah, cool. a real small Check group of in. folks. It's not out of control. Yeah, that's really. what we like. I like it small. I like it intimate, intimate. not sexual. But yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what else I like, boys? Hmm. Genetics. Oh, do you? Yes. And oh. in fact, I love it so much that I've been able to run with that title on a lot of my YouTube videos genetics, and just genetics, boost genetics. the views. So that's Trending. something we might be doing here today. Uh, just kidding. I'm no. not mad at that. Genetics, 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 genetics. genetics, genetics, genetics. genetics. Okay, you have sure. a shirt that says that. Genetics, yeah. I do. Genetics, genetics, genetics. Yeah. yeah, wasn't it stolen by someone else? Yes, it was. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <What>? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but genetics. I think a great place to start, man, would be uh, kind of the evolution of genetics. Because boy, we're doing this triploid thing, or we're not really, but they're doing this. Triploid I have thing. some, and uh, with with that going on, the stability of genetics and auto flowers. There's and and it all started at at land races. Yeah, yeah. So many, what, thousands of years ago, I probably? Thousands upon thousands. thousands. Probably millions, yeah. actually, if you think about it. There's probably billions. 100 when million yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> think he had a gobble you know, the 100 million years, yes. <laughs> Do you think the dinosaurs were, like, nibbling on it? Dude, well, what's crazy is, like, the, a lot of natural species obviously have come about, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you look at, for me, you look at just for me. For me, the natural um, evolution of the evolution would be just like bag seeds. I remember when like I had a huge, huge collection of just bag seeds from Schwag, just mids, not even less than mids, brick back in the day, but they were viable, so I wanted to keep them. And that was how I first got started. I didn't even realize the availability of getting genetics other than through the back of a High Times magazine. That was the only option, and that was sketchy for me because I don't want to send money receive product later yeah. like i didn't like that man so it was literally just bag seeds and that's what got going and then once cloning became a thing it was locally it was like oh well this person has this genetic or that genetic but it, that was it that was the only way you can get a genetic was hopefully you found some good smoke that gave you a seed and that was all you had you know well those genetics back then i mean let's talk about the brick 
you know, where did that come from? Um, mostly Mexico, right? It would Mexico, be in, yeah. smuggled in from Mexico and bricks. And I remember oh, tires players, and it's just, they it's had just, the male plants mixed with the female plants. So things were getting pollinated and seeds were being created and, they and they're just, just stomping it, it down yeah. and then shipping it over. And then, uh, yeah, that's bare bones, dirt. Yeah. And uh, that's where it started for me. I mean, I started smoking when I was 12. I'm 38 now. Gang, gang. And this was, you know, that's what I started with was the bagged crap, the swag. <laughs> and uh, we've come such a long way from there to to what mid-grade, uh, what we called mid-grades, at least in uh, right outside of Boston is where I grew up, where it didn't have as many seeds. There was still some, but not as many. And then I went to like kind buds and headies and hydro, where it was like seedless, uh, sense of media. Sense of media. Right? And yeah. um Man, that was a long time ago. <laughs> so yeah, I know now nothing, now nothing has seeds unless you're trying to uh, yeah. have that. You know, it's funny how, how finding a uh, a bean in your bag is almost now exciting. That, that should have <laughs> been. I'm a home grower. I get, get excited when I find when seeds I find in, beans my bag. in my bag. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Most people that that'll be like the deal breaker. Like it's mid. I found a seed. It's mid. It's like what? What? Yeah. Let me get it. Yeah, I'll take that mid. From that you. was some fire. Yeah, I'll Let take that. Let me get that, dude. Is it viable? Like that's always like squeeze it. Pinch it. See, is it, is it good? Like, only home growers would, would understand that reference. Otherwise, every other person is just like, get this out of here. This well, is yeah. trash. If you're know? going to your buddy's house or even a dispo and you have no garden set up at home and you're looking to buy a product and it come, it has beans in it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that would be frustrating, wouldn't it? Because that's, how much does that bean weigh? Because I bet you it's it's on the it's on the scale for 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2 Dude, of a gram. Me and Chris many- have prior history. Have you ever had times where there were so many beans and stems in a bag that you weighed that separately? Like that was like half of our yeah. brick. Oh, yeah. Like you break the brick because you think you're so blessed in Canada. Never had to deal with brick. Never. There'd be stuff that like you break it open and the inside, like somebody just poured seeds and stems <laughs> in it. Falls out. <laughs> like they hit them all. It's like them. a Kinder Egg surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like it's like a, a pinata cocoon. when things are just falling out. <laughs> There's a cocoon and some hair and a ton of seeds. A little like, owl pellet. Yeah. And the, but that was where it was. And most of them were so pressed. The seeds were squished because they were put yeah. in the press. Oh, yeah. And so they weren't viable to get. So it was like, it was only once that the mid grade stuff started coming around that was more buddy and chunky and wasn't pressed that you were able to just oh we found a couple there and that was what started me initially then it was you know finding a couple of different forums online that said go to attitude or go to this brand and that brand and i was just like didn't know what i was looking for i'm going for names hmm. but there was never like then when i did it i didn't see feminized that wasn't an option and maybe it was that long ago or i just was blind but there was just regulars and i didn't know there was options i thought it was just Beans, beans, beans. Oh, God. I, I think I remember f- on Attitude, there was feminized. Like, we were talking 2009? 2008, 2009. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know there when. probably was. I don't I just, know when fems came around. Hmm. But I know, I, I'm pretty certain I was getting I was getting fems at that time. Yeah, maybe I From, was too. Maybe I'm just, just yeah. gone. Well, but, you weren't, you definitely didn't have the wherewithal you have today when you were. Yeah, I was, I think I was just ordering stuff. As, I, I need wasn't White thinking. Widow, Strawberry <laughs> Cough. I need, yeah, like, what's the popular name? AK-47? Need it. Yeah. Yeah. Taking it. Yeah. Syndrome 99. Yeah. That's a popular one, right? Accidentally yeah. buy an auto. Yeah. You're like, oh, crap. What happened? You don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's happened. where, like, o- over time, you think about, like, back in Jorge Cervantes' days, you know, I'm sure he had, he knew a few people, but it wasn't like you could just go get an, an auto flower or just go get a feminized, you know, bean. It was just like, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. You got to try to find a male or a female and, and a good pheno within that process. Now you look at it and you have the same genetic and not often not smaller breeders but big genetics you can find an auto feminize now a triplet that's crazy that like there's so many variations of the same thing to get the different result it's like candy where you've got like sour patch kids gum sour patch kids and sour patch kids ice cream like 10 different variations but the same thing you know i think it's it's opened it up for people but then how we got this far the authenticity to some of these things you know are they feminized we were talking about um uh, you know, basically selfing outside. We were talking about that earlier, mm. how that's kind of the way to keep genetics around. You think maybe that's how some of these these popular ones that maybe originally were White Widow and somebody just self-pollinated it, ended up getting a bunch of feminized seeds and put those out, but then it's been watered down? Or you think people are just creating a bunch of random seeds, now they're feminized, and they're just calling it whatever they choose. What's the authentic? How do you know? You don't. You don't. You don't. We don't have that testing. We you don't just have that tissue. Got to take a guess. Like yeah, yeah. We don't have that tissue sampling that we that, that would be able to say, okay, this is a maple leaf. Well, that's this how I started. And like, I was so subjective that I'd order a white widow, and I thought the one that I got represented white widow. That was it. And I was like, this is mids. <laughs> 
And it's like, no, it was this one phenotype of this one potential knockoff bean that I got from this knockoff website. It doesn't mean that it was the one, you know. But at the time, I was so, you know, ignorant to a lot of things that I ended up looking at it in a perspective that this is definite. Everything is dead. This one experience of this, this sucks. Never want it again. But it was not knowing that how far the genetic has come, there's variables. Again, so many variables that maybe the one that I got is a replica or a knockoff. Hmm. Maybe the one that I got is not the right phenotype. Or, again, it's the the feminized version of the one that they chose, the people who made it chose. We've gone so far in genetics that now it's like, do the due diligence. You shouldn't get ripped off. You should get what you're looking for. But you have to pheno hunt. Hmm. You know, when did you guys initially discover um, variety versus just having backseat? 2009-ish? Yeah, yeah. My first was a bag, and then I immediately went to buy in genetics right away. Yeah, because, yeah, I wanted I wanted to know what I was growing. Yeah. And when you're getting a bag from your buddy, I... I learned from my buddy who had a whole bunch of good, good genetics to begin. Like, he had strawberry cough. He had skunk number one. He had NYC diesel, and I would get cuts from him. So I kind of got lucky to where yeah. I started yeah. with good genetics. Stumbled into he it. He taught yeah. me about good genetics, I tried to go bag seed when I was like 15 years old, just throwing bag seed next to a river and some good dirt that had a little bit of sunlight and that sprouted. And I didn't know what that guy was doing. Never got a harvest from it. But um, yeah, after, I didn't ever try to grow out that schwag bag seed. Probably for the better. Other bag seed, sure, but not like the bricked type Mexican yeah, stuff like we like were just talking about. Brick I was fortunate enough get, to start yeah. with good genetics to begin. Yeah, and that make, that's a huge difference. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. Um Particularly when you think about too, like, look, do you think that it, there's a case when people say the 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 herb from the '70s is not the herb from today? Oh yeah, people say like that a lot now, a lot, huh? a lot. Like well, the, a lot of the proponents, it, it's so saturated. I was just saying, you know, every new genetic comes out, all of a sudden, and it's just higher THC, purple, and yields more, but it smokes like nothing. Like it describes the flavor of water. Like I said, like we're smoking cardboard terps. There's just nothing to it, and I think that's the issue. Is they're running the masses of flour that's out there is average just really is so if people are going to get that i understand it's like having sex in a canoe <laughs> pretty much Fucking near water yeah pretty pretty <laughs> I, I feel like we're in a day and age so now we're again just like pheno hunting if you do the due diligence you can find the right stuff you got to shop with your nose more than your eyes and, and with what the name of the stuff is as where you're going in and you're like yeah they said it's 30 percent. this supposed to be jack hair but it ain't no just like well did you smell it check it out you should know this have some customer discretion on your own to be like no, this isn't what I'm looking for. You can't be mad at the market if you're not educated for the market. Before, you just had one buddy who had the good genetics, and he hooked you up, and now you think everything is that. You were just lucky. Just like every trip to Vegas for us has been great until this one. <laughs> and now we're like, it's just we should always go there. And now we're like, not Michigan. again. Wait Michigan. a minute. Now <laughs> it changes. But it's like until you have the good, like people can have nothing but good experiences, never have mites, never have issues, and be like, oh, I don't understand. Until they do. Then they understand. I think the genetics is some of these people, old old school hippies, let's say, or people who lived in that era, there was a lot less flour around. There was a lot less genetics around. Oh, for sure. You know, maybe you're, more you're, flour, less genetics. So you were going to most likely really get the dank because there wasn't a million varieties. How many, how many different land races are there? Is it 15? I don't even know. Like Pretty a, sure it's... It's not. <coughs> it's not hundreds. No, it's not. No, it's there's not a, a lot, lot of inbreeding that brought a lot of the extra stuff yep, out. Yep, I yep. think that that's where though these things have gotten so saturated out by keeping up with the Joneses and the marketing and the money of of this industry versus maintaining quality. Well, it, I, I think it plays to more than that too. I think at particular time evolution of genetics, there it, it really depended on the the political climate or the cultural climate. Whereas, you know, you had these genetics that had such incredible smells, like your skunks. And then throughout time, as that smell became more synonymous with with um, being prosecuted, people got rid of that. They yeah, didn't want that. that sneakier. Right. And I, whereas <laughs> Started vice- water curing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like... The so, best curing, obviously. So the evolution of, of, say, the skunk wouldn't have been the same as something else where that it didn't have that smell. Whereas if they were chasing profit, chasing money, you know, you might want that smell. You might want that there to say, okay, you're paying more because I've got this genetic, I got these terps coming at you. And, and over, over time, it, it, it didn't really do that. It kind of, it was kind of speaking to whatever we were looking for. So we weeded out the smell of skunk, but then we started to breed in 
incredible amounts of THC. We've focused on THC for the better half of a, a century, 50 years. It's a selling point. Just like I feel like most people, they look at that as their, their and there's nothing subjective about that number, but it's subjective about the smell or the look, or these are all subjective things. But when you're saying this is 32%, you're like, oh, well, you can't argue that. It's, it's fire. It's like smokes like cardboard. Again, this is just mids. But then you, you I think uh, you hit the, uh, the, the nail on the head really well there. But then also think about like music. One song will be on the radio a ton, and you're so tired of it. You never want to hear it again. But then 10 years later, I'll kick on some little fresh in my eyes out. My man's from Bow Wow. Uh, little Bow Wow. You're just, eh, eh. <laughs> yeah. Because upstairs, I hear him playing that. I come down, I was like, little Bow Wow? I remember this. He used to kick it to this back now. in the day. He ain't little. Yeah, he's Bow Wow. He's, <laughs> he's, no, he's not little anymore. Uh, does he still make music? I have no idea. But that was the hit. And it wasn't was for a long a time because it was so played out on the radio. You're like, eh, something different. I want something different. Hmm. I think the market, the masses, and I see this when I was in the commercial space. What's the next hot genetic? What's the next hot thing? You know what I'm saying? Right now, donuts is getting real popular from Humboldt C- uh, HSO, we'll just say, HSO, <laughs> and which is great. But then it's going to get oversaturated, just like the runs did, just like the gelatos did, just like a permanent marker in this last year has, or a sherb cream pie. People, everyone gloms onto it. Everyone who's trying to make profit gets these genetics. They push it, push it, push it. So someone's like, I need something different. I'm tired. I want something new. And then so then the the breeders are trying to keep up with the market. The growers are keeping up with the market, and they're just throwing shit out there. Just yeah. new one, new one, new one. The issue is, is the only thing that is the selling point to the masses still right now is the THC and the look, not the overall quality. Those are the two determining factors, not maybe for the homegrown smoker. We're seeing that we are seeing that shift. It's starting to slowly and, and shift. We see that with shift with, with like, CBD. Because, you know, yeah, it was THC for 50 years. And then all of a sudden, over the course of the last 10, 6, 10, it's CBD. CBD well, there was condoms, a CBD craze. And it's, dog it's starting to <laughs> dial. <laughs> curtains. Well, it's starting to dial down a little bit it with is, that. It is. But but I that's, think that's the evolution. Yeah, yeah. It. And so it's like you, you, you kind of see where it's it, it, they speak to. And, it, and people are starting to now see, okay, what about CBN? You know, very, CBG. CBG. HHC. H, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got a whole another episode yeah, on yeah. that. Um, the the idea that uh, you know you can actually have a, the CBN going to be a counteractive to THC. Um, you know, they're, they're, I think we're going to start to understand more and more as we go on. But the genetics have evolved as to, or so too have we, and our equipment and our processes and our methods and our testing and everything. Everything too, to find, we, yeah. we were doing everything outdoors. That's why you were smoking brick was because you had males and females in a field. Tossed out there, tossed well, and, out, and plus just not germinating, not and cured, not taken nothing. care of properly. Just yeah, and stuck right into a bag or a box and shipped wherever. Um, I wonder how much mold and like you know how much bud rot and mold oh, there dude, were and those right. things, and that bugs. we used to consume all the time. Yeah. Bugs, yeah. yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like in the commercial market in Michigan, they make the moisture content's too high, the microbes, is, and I'm like, dude, I was smoking cocoon, son. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking yeah. about? Like mummified. I had a moth in my my lungs, bro. Like, I went hard. I don't understand what you're talking about. I've pulled huge strings and globs of hair and been like, oh, you're going to roll blunt. Like, with the same nasty shit. That has a layer of stuff that I was like, maybe that's resin. I don't yeah. know. It's it, dark on there, and it smells like gross stuff. Poison. Now, have we come a long way? We long way since that. We have. And, you know, I, th- I attribute a lot of that because we've evolved our processes. We went from growing outside to then growing in greenhouses to then growing indoors. To and then, then now growing for trichomes even. Right. People aren't even growing for flour anymore. Right. They're growing right. stuff that I'm like, why would you grow? There's no yield. What are you doing? Like, yeah. Dude, but the wash, I'm getting 40% wash on this. Right. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's so the you're growing of the process. For, and people are making genetics that are wash genetics. That's all they're for. And I'm like, well, okay. I actually was reached out to by by some a guy. Um, I can't remember the name, but it was mutant. They, they were all mutant genetics. Hmm. And Naughty, like, uh, uh not his nurseries into mutants. I was that's looking it. on his Instagram. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. him. He's got some crazy looking. Yeah, st- yeah, everything yeah. looks like freak shows. Yeah, wow. yeah. And the, and the buds, bro. Yeah, like some of the buds weird. just like. But then that stuff will well, again like washing in terms of making bubble hash for those of you who are new to the term, and then turning that into rosin. That's a trend for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. They'll take live flour, they'll freeze it, flash freeze it, then they'll press that, or they'll wash that into bubble hash. They'll take the bubble hash, cure that, and then press that. I mean, talk about a process. But then you get some really, really, really high quality extract, which has such a unique terpene and flavonoid combination that you wouldn't even get from your flour because you're agitating it in a different way. There's stuff that comes out as flour that I'm like, mids. And then the extract, fire, like the 
Um, first class bunk it was from Franklin Field. Straight up mids. Mids. But the extract, fire. It was gassy, nasty, funky. I'm like, oh, there it is. So this well, was not meant to be flour. This was meant to be. Yeah, but then it's like other stuff that was fire, fire as flour. Kind of lackluster as concentrate. It's like it was. Well, not it comes meant down to the morphology. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm no expert when it comes Wrongies. to it. But isn't like the looser area stuff better to wash because yeah. you're able to get getting the insides of the where versus those a lot of people that are growing really that are consuming flour. They prefer the dense stuff. You know, they go after the dense stuff, and there's That's a big difference. Taught, you know. That if it's foxtail and airy, you did something wrong. <laughs> you know, that's not the genetic. That's you, bud. You got too much heat. You too much this, too much that. Get those concentrated more, guys creaming in their pants over that. Oh, oh this is fantastic. Dry that's what I learned, man. Shout out to, to uh, Trey and and, and the, the other home. Oh, man, I'm just lit at this point. But shout out to the Wash Boys. You know who you are, Wash man. Boys. The Wash Boys. And shout out to the Mid Boys. <laughs> and shout out to the Mid Boys. Oh, Inside man, but, joke there. But the... Uh, the crew explained a lot to me that I was going in and I'm like, this shit's mids. Like, oh, no, dude, this stuff's going to wash so like they just knew immediately like, yeah. this right here, dude. And I'm like, no, and they come back tomorrow <laughs> and see. And they got a huge jar just packed to the top with golden oozing, gorgeous rosin. I'm like, I was, I told them to get rid of this one. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> like the flower sucked. So I was like, yeah, but that's not what the point of this is. Like the best flower was yielding like three to five percent returns versus the worst flower was getting up to thirty percent returns. Mm -hmm. So that's where breeders are are literally breeding genetics yeah. for these reasons now. And it's what's your end result? What are you looking for? And that's where like it's a great evolving. point to bring up your chemicals. They're evolving higher turf. Yeah, literally, dude. The breeders are evolving. It's not, just, and it's making us level up. Well, and know? not not only again, not just yeah. as content creators. And, and, and look at. Like seventies, eighties, what were people using to feed their plants? Logan is his name. God, Miracle Grow. Shout out Logan Trey. Um, Miracle Grow. You know, they, like eighties, <laughs> nineties. Unless you were a real organic heady, which very few were at that time in regards to our plant, you were using Miracle Grow, and it was not curated for our plant at all. It's for yeah. tomatoes and lilacs, and and uh, and so as as we started to hone in our nutrient inputs, we started to speak specifically to this plant. Well, you started to see greater yields. You started to see higher potencies, more terpene profiles. That speaks to us honing in our process. The evolution of LEDs. Uh, LEDs. Uh, going, going from uh, indoor with uh, HID to blurple to cob lights to quantum boards to bar styles. I'm probably missing something. So it's like... Although now we've got now we've got lights that are, you don't even change the spectrum on them anymore. You need yeah. one light. All that, I need is one light. One light. One light. One spectrum one light. the whole way through. That's yeah. right. That's right. One opportunity. So it's like, I, I, it's amazing to see how we've leveled ourselves up. And because of that, we've leveled up our genetics. We've honed in genetics that speak to us. We've got the THCs. We've got the CBDs. We've got the terpenes. We've got the ones that are desirable, which ones aren't desirable. And we've got auto flower versions of those. Autos. Uh, you, you know, know feminized versions fems, of those. Fems. The That's triploids. The this is the the gold ru the green rush so to speak. I mean, not for money, but for enthusiasts right now. It's like, dude, whatever you want, it's happening. The stability is there, the quality is there, the information's there, the equipment's there. Everything's available nowadays, and it's so much easier to get that end result you want versus decades ago when it's like, all right, I'm going to send out this money order. That's actually, I hope they send me my stuff. That's actually back. a really good point too. To the adds to the fact that now anybody can get the, can that desired to, result can start to hone like, their process, in which only brings greater things to this industry because well, that's where you're, stuck you're finding in. things well and you're stuck in the dispensary you i was just, yeah, just took the words if you're, if you're stuck in the dispensary you can't find what you want because you're only getting what they give you that's right and that's based on the buyers buying because what the market want like literally the deets is the buyer who works for the company who's the dispo is dealing with the sale the seller from the wholesale flower company or whatever extract company they're going based on dollar amount and thc always and then bud size a buds which is bigger buds b buds Smaller ones or smalls, which is like, and that's all that they're looking for. They're not smelling it. They're not checking it out. They didn't get a sample to smoke. Well, a couple places, but for the most part, it's all that. So then you're going in and your options, you're like, look at all these options. And it's like, smell all the jars. They all smell the same. Like there's one or two that may pop, but everything else is just like, <sighs> like there's a place in Muskegon, shout out Grassy Knoll. They, they have like three different shelves of like low tier, which is always the best. The lowest tiers, but it's small buds. It's little buds, but then B tier, which is like shit. they call us, or like uh, I don't remember the name of it. They call and, the shit. Well, the shit, like with <laughs> the a C. Shit. I know that's what I thought too. Oh, the shit. Yeah, the, the shit. shit. 
This yeah. is the, the this, chit. Yeah, the chit. <laughs> but uh, it, it's crazy because you look at the stuff that's the chit, and <laughs> it's never nearly as good as the stuff on the bottom shelf, but the market looks at Little Buds as bad. Well, some people prefer the lower shelf stuff. I know Wink prefers the lower shelf vodka, right? Shout out Kenjaka. <laughs> shout, you know? shout out to that lower shelf stuff. Some people literally do prefer, and honestly, I'm a lower shelf shopper when it comes to the flower because it, I, I smell it. Now, it's the, maybe the smaller buzz, but I'm like, whew, this is some fry. 90 for the Z out the door. Three of them. Run it. You know, versus the top shelf stuff that's buck 80. Yeah. Big buds, big, pretty, gorgeous, but I'm like, let me smell it. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, exactly. You know? I've been sitting on the shelf for so long. Terpenes have volatized off the plant. Well, nobody wants well, to pay that price. And too, that's, another, so, you know? that's another thing, too, is like uh, as we see things start to evolve is uh, the, the process to which we are going to store and manufacture, I think, is the next step to change because we're still storing in plastic. Well, and that's where like and the Canatrol and all these things that it's still tabooish because the price is so expensive. It's like a LED TV when LEDs were just starting to pop off. But we got to the point now where I feel like people are seeing, okay, well, I can imitate the things that this is doing. Now I'm not just putting my plant to dry. Now I'm like, okay, 60, 60 or whatever you're looking at for humidity and temperature. But we know there's a science now behind these. It's no longer opinion. It's like we have to make sure our end product is right. Some genetics, like I said, that the terpenes slap so hard right away, headbanger from karma, take a shot or a dab if I said it and you, it was part of the game. Um, I feel like that's one that I didn't have to cure much. Chill out OG, another one. I didn't have to care much. It kind of got a earthy, funky after two weeks. I'm like, boom, hit her. But then um, this Chem de la Creme or Creme de la Chem that I got from Mephisto, that one took almost a month, and now it's hitting. It's, I've been letting it sit for a while, and we just smoked one, like maybe an hour ago, and when you guys were like, what's this? I was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this was shit I hated. And now all of a sudden, after a good cure, yep. it's come it's combed out. We're came out properly. I think that's where the breeders, like, there's such variety nowadays that if you don't do the due diligence, you're not going to get those results in terms of your effect. You can't be like, oh, well, it's because shitty genetics. It's like, no, you just didn't phenol hunt it. Or you didn't cure it properly. You didn't know the characteristics it needed. You didn't finish it right. So many variables to that. But there's no longer just a, it was just shit. You know, it's like. Mm. So what are we working towards then? Like where, like where, where does the evolution of this plant end? Like it seems like the, the journey has been for stability. Right. Like if you think from 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 land races to to today, it's really well. I guess stability and preference. We want yeah, something that's gonna gonna do its job, but it's got to be stable because it can't just keep pop. It can't be hermian, or it's never gonna get to to flower. Um, so we've we've really figured out how to hone in the regulars to feminized. So we've got the stability of just always getting femin uh, f um, females, and then now with the, the idea of triploids. Now that the the stability of genetics, you're not going to have that wavering of of really any any variables. It seems. So where do we go from here? Do does the does the terpene profile get more enhanced, more flavor? Like what do you well, think? Well, if, if you if you think about this, and I've mentioned this on a, a episode before, terpene profile. Let's say there's what over a hundred terpenes, is over a hundred cannabinoids, right? The different combinations that are out there. Are beyond hitting power, you know, hitting Powerball, for example, you're right? right? No, the you're right. odds you're right. of it. So, like, it's kind of nonstop when it comes to the different terpene profiles that can happen, or the different cannabinoid profiles that can happen in our lifetime. Maybe we see evolution within testing, so we're able to nail down testing more, and we're able to, to breed and change those profiles, uh, growing it different ways. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just yeah. kind of speculating there, but it's very exciting. Yeah. It's very exciting, especially right now. Uh, are you googling it? I'm, what oh. I'm looking up is orchid, fucking different types of orchids. Because my uncle is an orchid nerd, right? And there, so like, there's tons. They've tons been messing with those for a long time. Long time. Yeah. Twenty five thousand to thirty thousand different species of orchids, and at least ten thousand can be found just in the tropics. Wow. So that's just nature. So think about the human intervention. Oh like yeah. The element of it. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like yep. for there's I mean I don't see Gene this editing, ever stability. CRISPR technology, right? We Ugh. gonna see that in oh, uh, why why not? Scary. Genetically modified. Well like I look at it in the <laughs> sense of like this is a hobbyist plant that also has benefits in terms of medicinal and recreational, all these things. There's always gonna be people who are looking for the next best thing. And then with all these different combinations, they're gonna stumble on something unique. You look at Ben and Nat who who basically revolutionized the process of, of uh, triploids or triploids for this space which is amazing but it's not a first of its kind 
it maybe be the best of its kind because there's a lot of other variations of it. I think things, stability in terms of like predictability may be a thing, but I feel like our variables in the variety is going to just keep expanding and keep expanding, especially with tissue culture coming into tissue normal uh, mainstream cult, you know, society. Most commercial grows have tissue culture active consistently. Now with breeders starting to tap into that, that's where the next side of things where, I mean, the options are endless. They really are. They are endless. They really when are. you got like a small little tiny little space that you're doing st- like this, I- I'm blown away where science is going with genetics. Sometimes I get a little worried. Imagine, w- maybe, I'm just throwing this out there. Do you think there'll ever be a point where we start crossing this with another plant? Somebody was just saying this to have like weed infused tomatoes, right, or cucumbers, right. and like there was a or even like a, like, pio- like, like a or like a a, a, a a yeah, or like a or like a psilocybin. Like, yeah, smokable psilocybin or something. I don't know. Maybe take the best, maybe some of the therapeutic aspects of psilocybin. I don't know if I can say that that much. Silly, but, and, and, silly and, psybins. And, and those silly psybins. Silly psybins. You ever met psybin? Anyways, um, I, I wonder if that would, where we could take the beneficial aspects out of that and add it to here. I, I'm curious. Glow in the dark pigment. <laughs> or like the glow the, in the dark genetics. There's no I've banana turps about that before. In, in, in our plant. So I wonder if you could introduce banana turps. Well, I think Let's cross a banana at this. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Is it at all possible? <laughs> and this is at that tissue culture. This is at a microbe level where you would take a part of the banana, put it into the whatever. You know, that would be cra- like, but that's that's the craziest style. parts, man. Like, it goes above think, all of our heads. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, somebody's watching this, they cringe and they have like, uh, you know, oh, like, that's not. They go to school for this. They go to school for this. What did you hear? You talk yeah, about to school for this. Yeah, these guys. When Star Trek came out, people were like, "You can't do that." But a much of the inventions, or the iPhone, for example, was or the, was the in video calls and was all inspired yeah. by Star Trek. So people did think that was crazy at a time. And what, what do you know? Tell? Yeah. Yeah, where you at? <laughs> where you at? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, people did think it was crazy at times to see these kind of things, but you know, I, I'm very excited because I, again, we're still seeing new innovations. When we talked to to Nat and um, ben. ben, Ben, they were so excited, they're so enthusiastic, and I had a feeling that there's there there's more. Oh, there's yeah. more. There, this is just well, especially when you get into tetraploids and all these other levels of things where right. like. Right, uh, chromosome manipulation and gene manipulation in a more ethical way or natural way of doing it that's a whole nother level it's a whole nother can of worms i love it and then like i think that's where we're going to maybe potentially start seeing more uh unique varieties but then stability in terms of not dealing with seeds and hermes and things like that Imagine. that'll be where it comes in because if you can use tissue culture to maintain the genetic makeup of that triploid and you have it. But if tissue culture is this taboo subject that people are like, whoa, you have to be a scientist to be able to do this. It's like, well, then, yeah, there's going to be an issue. I put a video out recently on CLTV, and a lot of people were like, man, yeah, only if a home grower could do it. It's like, just go on Google. There's kits like that have everything you need. Or you could just get each piece and do it at home. Like You could make a laminar flow hood. There, this is all done. You could do this. You think people are, are growing these silly sibins magically? How does this come? How, how do we get it? Must be labs. No, it's in somebody's grow tent. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't even need a grow tent. <laughs> not even. You know your closet. Like not even windowsill. I was just gonna say. Well, I mean, that's a whole other episode. But yeah. we've gotten to the point now where the mainstream society is seeing these uh, these evolutions, the science, the things that are making it so it's more approachable. Just wait till AI gets involved, dude. Oh. Yeah, slowly but surely already. Like I've been talking about it, dude. Yeah, like episode, if, if you can plug in all of the variables of all your phenotypes and predict, don't. Sp- don't give our ideas away. We think about Uh-oh. this shit on our own. Uh-oh. Just wait till AI Just gets wait involved. Wait until right. Alan Iverson gets involved. I think it's, an, it's a very exciting time. Very exciting time because it, we're at the we're at the pinnacle of what can be done yeah. with this plant. When Dude. science in general, and, and we all benefit from it. We get to smoke this shit. Happens. We get to smoke it. And, and but I've more, got one twisted for more, us more, this. more importantly, though, there's a ton of patients out there that are That's, suffering. And and although we've got a Great, well, I'm waiting for us. We there do. are people out there that could really benefit from from a further advancing and a further evolution of these genetics to enhance those medicinal properties and enhance those 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 characteristics or, or terpenes or what have you, those cannabinoids that are going to be able to meet the needs of people that really really need them. And uh, I, I can't wait, man! It's so exciting. That conversation we had with uh, with the guys from HSO was so wicked HSC. because HSC. HSC shoot you know what the you HSO said HSO HSO earlier. fired <laughs> yeah you said OE. I probably did and but I didn't cancel HSC. those guys but nonetheless I, I'm very excited name. I'm very excited and I HSO. have to ask I have to ask the, the you guys in the in the audience because 
this is the three of us thinking of where the future of this plant will go. Where do you see the evolution of this plant? Yeah, where do you think these genetics are going to be going? I mean, a lot of people have the titroid. Titroid. Triploid fear. Oh, jeez. And they're just scared to death that this is going to take over the game. But again, this is now another option, another variable. What's the next frontier? I think it has its place. I don't think it's going to overtake everything. All, all of a sudden, there's no regulars and there's no feminized no, and there's no autos. Are you going to testing all of every one of your beans? That you have chill out OG or every one of these going to go and be tested for extra chromosome? <laughs> no, of course not. And it's the same way. Do you remember I, when autos came out? Autoflowers are going to kill genetics. Autoflowers. Oh, I'm, the that, I'm the one that says genetics. this. Yeah. I'm the one that says autoflowers are where it. genetics go to die. So I don't think it's going to kill. It you won't. Know, everyone's going to have a choice. I think FEMS is still going to dominate. You know, Hardcore. Yeah, so. Hardcore. As much as people are like, you need a regular. Regulars are the most stable. But then you got somebody who's had the same fem seed for years. It just I, keeps cloning. The cl There's no my genetic argument drift. for regs is for stability, and I've never had an issue with them. I know, and that's the thing is <laughs> so. like it's one of those like like grow myth things, and like yeah, there probably is some science between this genetic and this genetic, but you can't say this category is superior to this category unless you can give me all of those reasons why, and it's still subjective. We did a video a you few know? weeks ago in regards to the easiest way to grow, and I yeah. think it was subjective. I oh think yeah, that kind of applies to this as well as where are we going? What's going to happen? It's subjective. Who's it going to speak to? I think the, the the answer is hopefully someday we can speak to more people. Yeah, I meet, totally meet agree. the needs of so many people, guys. This was a wicked conversation. Full can I was it wicked? Yeah, yeah. full can I? Yep. Almost um, as wicked as Stash Blend. Make oh, sure you check out StashBlend.com. We got seamless. some banger banger additives just the one in particular called and stash it, blend and we got discount code the stash use it as well growers house yes yeah, so and, and a huge huge shout out we kind of mentioned it loosely at the beginning of the show huge shout out to all of our patrons uh over on patreon.com slash from the stash fts is a crowdfunded community supported program we're able to create free uh ad, i'd say ad free but free episodes for, for the internet entertainment um, every week here. because of you guys so thank you so much for supporting us we have a very intimate uh, Discord session that we do with our patrons where you can come in, do a video chat. We smoke, we talk, we laugh, we cry. It's a great time. I've cried twice. I think twice. you guys will enjoy it. Yeah, he gets a bit emotional. I get emotional. But, uh, but, but thank you guys for being our patrons. I think actually, as a matter of fact, you're seeing some of our, uh, our um, premium patrons right now on the yeah. bottom of the screen. So Also, you may see this really pretty shirt here. Oh, did you get that at stashmerch.com? Uh, stash. Stashmerch.com, I believe this is from. Com. This is a new Stash Blend shirt here. There you go. Increase your stash. Uh, stashmerch.com. Check that out. It's a pretty cool place. Got some new designs on the way, too. Some really cool ones, I think. Showed you guys as well. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Also, make sure you get Chris's book, Organic oh, okay. and a Bass yeah. Cultivation. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. Casual. Sure. Why not? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Look how that was wicked. How Wasn't we it? did that all at the same time. <laughs> Man. We didn't work on that. This is a solid book. This is a book for the community, by the community, really. There's literally pictures from people in the community in the book, which yeah. is crazy to see. Yeah. It's awesome. Imagine, like, you're solidified as, like, a homegrown legend. <laughs> you'll have that and if you're watching this you may have heard about the growers gauntlet because i'm gonna have it out by then you could become a growers legend check it out growers that's gauntlet. Gauntlet. the growers gauntlet that's crazy man growers, growers. Growers, growers, growers. Guys, trifecta let's go smoke thank you guys so uh, much for tuning in wink, wink looks like look at, we got bob marley back <laughs> there <laughs> look at gene simmons here give awesome. me some tongue <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Makeup, man. and nobody can see him oh, so too bad too thank bad. you guys so much i'm pigeons that's rob that's chris we're out of here thanks wink peace out peace, peace.